Shladivs, welcome to this week's Shladmed for the week March 19th, 2012, entitled Tsunami Healing. A year ago, Japan was devastated by a magnitude 9.0 quake, causing a tsunami that claimed over 20,000 lives. In the city of Komaishi, 30-foot waves destroyed the inner city, killing a thousand of its 40,000 inhabitants. When the waters receded, rescuers entered the city's devastated streets and started pulling the dead from the rubble. They carried the bodies to the gymnasium of a vacant middle school that had escaped damage, and it became a large morgue. Atsushi Chiba, a 72-year-old retired undertaker, went to the gym to look for friends and family, and was struck by the mounting numbers of bodies. Most of the dead were wrapped in plastic, still in muddy clothes, with their rigid limbs sticking out. Mr. Chiba, well trained in the ancient Buddhist rituals of preparing the dead for cremation, looked at them and thought, if the bodies were left this way, the families who came to claim them wouldn't be able to bear it. In Japan, he said, we treat the dead with respect as a way of comforting the living. So the first thing he did was to wipe their faces clean, and then he massaged their stiff limbs so that their bodies looked less contorted. He wanted every family to know that somebody had taken care of their loved one until they arrived. Mr. Chiba's attempts to honor the dead quickly caught on. People put together the school desks to build a makeshift altar, and each time a body was carried out, workers lined up with their heads bowed to pay their last respects. Mr. Chiba said it didn't make any difference whether the people were religious or not, Mourning for the dead, he said, is a fundamental need. This simple act of humanity offered comfort to the living. In our culture, we dramatically underutilize rituals and ceremonies in the pursuit of healing. Even though rituals and ceremonies provide the structure by which people get in touch with their hearts and souls. When we share our humanity in community, it reminds us that we do not face our sorrow alone. Gathering in this way creates a passionate energy that lifts the human spirit and renews the bonds that bind people together. We need to spend more time in ritual and ceremony, especially in times like these. And if you're interested in this kind of material and want to read more about the healing power of ritual and ceremony, I encourage you to read my recent book, Kindling Spirit, Healing from Within, which you'll find at healingdoc.com. And in the meantime, reach out before disaster befalls us and connect in community that reminds you that you are not alone. Have a wonderful week. Remember, we are all connected. I say this for all my relations. Mitakwiasi.